my sins are washed, they're all washed away, all my sins are washed away. Sing it again. I'm amazed that you love me. I'm amazed how you care. Through your precious blood I found pardon. And my sins are washed. They're all washed away. All my sins are washed away. Amen. Well, God bless you. I want to welcome you this morning in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Good to have you here with us. And those on the internet, God bless you as well. Amen. God is good, is he not? Amen. Amen. Let's sing number uh, 563. Amen. Come and dine, the master calleth. Come and dine. Jesus has a table spread where the saints of God are fed. He invites his chosen people come and die. With his manna he doth feed and supplies our every need. Oh, tis sweet to sup with Jesus all the time. Oh, come and die. Master calleth, come and die. Oh, you may feast at Jesus' table all the time. He who fed multitude, turn the water into wine. To the hungry calleth now, come and die. The disciples came to land, thus obeyed. Christ command for the master called to them oh come and die there they found their heart's desire bread and fish upon the fire thus he satisfies the hungry every time oh come and die master call and come and die table all the time. He who fed a multitude, turn the water into wine. To the hungry call it now, come and die. Soon the Lamb will take his bride to be ever at his side. All the hosts of heaven will assemble thee. All the saints in spotless white, and with Jesus they will feast eternally. Let's stand, oh come and die, the master call is come and die. Oh you may feast at Jesus' table. needs to be fixed. Do we want to take a couple of seconds to fix it so you guys can actually sing with me? Yes. That'd be all right? I appreciate that. Isaac, why don't you come fix that? He's grabbing the ladder. All right. Does anybody have a testimony? This is a perfect testimony time. And everybody goes completely quiet. <laughs> Sister Jerry. Amen. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Amen. Now, Wednesday night, we saw Sister Jerry's dad here. 
Amen. That's an answer to prayer. That's, being, that's God being faithful. Amen. It's, the little, it's in the little things. Amen. Anybody else? I know it was the blood. I know it key of F. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. Well, one day when I was lost, he died upon the cross. I know it was the blood. Sing it again, yes, I know it was the blood, I know it was the blood, I know it was the blood for me, oh, one day when I was lost, he died upon the cross.
last time, oh, every day with Jesus, sweeter than the day before, every day with Jesus, I love him more and more, Jesus saves and keeps me, and he's the one I'm waiting for. Amen. Let's sing number 601, Joy Unspeakable, Full of Glory. I have found His graces all complete. He supplieth every need. Well, I sit and learn at Jesus' feet. I am free, yes, free indeed. Well, it is joy unspeakable and full of glory, full of glory, full of glory. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory, and the half has never yet been told. God rich in mercy, key of D. God rich in mercy. God rich in mercy. Sending His Son, we were undone. God rich in mercy. Sending his best from heaven above, saying to all of men today, O God, rich in mercy, O God, rich in mercy, O God, rich 
Grandma Jerry in prayer, she's feeling kind of down, so we want to lift her up this morning. Lord, would just be her portion. Sister Miriam Dean Hart is asked that we pray for my friend's parents in Ohio, Mr. and Mrs. Hageman. They are very sick and in need of salvation. Also pray for Sister Patricia in Tucson. Her son was found dead yesterday, so we want to lift her up in prayer. And uh, Isaac's asked to remember Francisco Alvarado in prayer. Uh, he continues to battle cancer. He's having a tough fight, so we want to lift him before the Lord. Brother David, why don't you come, brother? Take these knees to our Lord. Amen. God bless you this morning. Amen. I had something on my heart, that little portion of a quote of It's All Right. I said, Lord, if you want me to bring this, you have him call me. And I just, I thought, well, Lord, it's all in your hands. It's taken out of the unveiling of God. Paragraph 21, he said, May the Lord add his blessings to the reading of his word. He just read the scriptures. Now, my subject this morning, I trust that God will reveal this. Oh, how many are thankful for revelation? I cannot be thankful enough for the revelation of the word given to by his grace to us. And each time, I trust that God will reveal this, and each time if you take the tapes and listen and hope and trust that you have had a spiritual understanding of what God has been trying to get over to the church without saying it right out. See, it's a thing sometime. We have to say things in such a way that it might thin down. It might bring some to go out, some to leave, some to ponder over, but that's done purposely. It must be done that way. Then it might be that some would say, you mean God would purposely do a thing like that? Yes. He certainly did. He does yet. Yes. And I'm moving on down. You read between, you read afterwards. I like to read the whole quotes for several here but he said a little further down he said you can't explain faith it's something that you believe and it's so solid that there's nothing else will take its place hallelujah Thank you. amen let's bow our heads for a word of prayer our heavenly father we bow reverently in your presence thanking you once again for divine revelation for you said my sheep hear my voice a stranger they will not follow because they cannot hear the voice of strangers Lord it's all you're working Lord it's all you're doing Lord we're thankful that you've had mercy upon us that you chose us in yourself before the foundation of the world Lord, it's all you're working this day. We're expecting to receive from you this morning. We're expecting you to take the vocal cords of your servant and bring forth what thou hast ordained to bring forth and we are open and hungry to receive from you. Lord, we thank you for the word of life, the message of this hour, that within it, Lord, we sent a word that it might mature your bride. Preparing her heart.
preparing her life in the righteousness of yourself to rapture, to a body change. Lord Jesus, we are anticipating to receive that portion this morning that is fit for your people, your bride, your elect. Now, Father, remember these requests, the ones with cancer, ones that are suffering, this sister that found her son dead. Lord, different ones. Lord, these needs are needs. They've been expressed before your church. Now, in the name of Jesus Christ, we impart your grace and mercy to every one of these, and may they be ministered to according to thy divine purpose and according to thy word. Whether it's healing, peace, deliverance, whatever it may be, Father, we're thankful that you hear this request, and now we believe we receive it. Bless your word. Lord, I pray, let us go out of here expecting to leave here, not the same, but raised to a higher plane in thee. For Lord, we're marching forward. We've heard the voice, we've received and heard the trumpet call, Lord, to march on, go forward. Not turning back, going forward, Lord. We go forward into that body change for your glory and your honor through a message that you've given by your mercy. Reveal it, Lord. We ask you for revelation. And we do this for thy glory. Bless the offering as it's taken. May, Lord, it go to the intended purpose and service that you've intended for it. In thy name, the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, as you can see, we're going to have a special day today. Sister Vika is going to be getting baptized. So we're looking forward to that. And uh, yesterday I was singing, yesterday morning, we will see miracles. So I've asked Sister Jerry if she'd come and sing that song again. I know it was a blessing.
will be filled with the glory of the Lord, like the waters cover the sea. The whole earth will be filled with the glory of the Lord, like the waters cover the sea. The whole with the glory of the Lord, like the waters cover the sea. The whole earth will be filled with the glory of the Lord, like the waters cover the sea. We will see your glory.
glad you have somewhere to cast your cares. Amen. You know, if we didn't have a place to let off the pressure, you know, you look out in the world and you see people, they hardly even acknowledge God. And the very nature that they have, they just simply take the cares of their life and cast them over their shoulder and go on. Part of that, you say, man, they're fortunate. But you see, part of it is they don't realize they have an accountant coming. And we as believers, you know the whole terminology they have in the world today, these people are woken. Well, I tell you, isn't it amazing how Satan comes and he impersonates that? Because there's no greater awakening than a man or woman being awoken to the fact they're sons and daughters of God. And so Satan come along and grabbed that terminology and placed it on a thought where people feel like, oh yes, we're so culturally, or whatever it might be, uh, woken. But I'm telling you, my brother and sister, there's no awakening that they can have unless it's in Jesus Christ that can even come close to what God has done for you and I. Amen. Amen. It's just uh, such a beautiful, beautiful thing. And you know, this morning I'm very happy in my heart um, celebrating um, our sister Vika, our heart's desire to be baptized, to Amen. just make that commitment, Lord, I'm going to serve you. Amen. You know, that's, it's just a, such a lovely, lovely thing. Amen. Amen. So we're happy, looking forward to that here in a little while. I have an announcement I want to share with you, church. Um, uh, I won't go into all the details, but... Um, just a conversation we were having with Brother George Smith a few days ago. Um, and uh, the result of that is on... Oh, I forgot to write the dates down. My goodness, for Paul, that's like a disaster. Um, February 6th, thank you. That's why God gives us good wives. <laughs> February 6th is a Saturday, 7 p.m., we are going to have questions and answers. Brother George is going to host that. That means here in the flesh. So then uh, you can turn your questions in. So we're not going to do kind of a random hit miss thing. Uh, turn your questions in. You can put your name on them. Brother George says you want to put your name and be identified with your question. No problem. If you don't, no problem. So if you have questions, things you'd like Brother George to discuss, and I ask him, Brother George, what is on the table? And he says, Brother Paul, if uh, there's a question that I don't want to answer, I'll just simply look at them and say, I'm not answering this. <laughs> so, you know, uh, you know, one time, uh, uh, I think Brother George, if I remember correctly, had somebody, you know, ask some, some question concerning him and Sister Rebecca that was like very personal, and he's like, um... I'm not answering that for you or anyone else. <laughs> so, uh, uh, but let's, let's do that. So please, um, that gives us uh, one day shy of two weeks, right? Uh, so please turn in your questions uh, uh, beforehand. Uh, and uh, we're looking forward to a lovely time with, with Brother George uh, to come. Uh, a lot of insight. I actually mentioned something to Brother George uh, uh, of something of a recent conversation. And it's interesting, saints, because those people who were there, uh, Brother George being a part of that household, sitting at the table, riding in the car, hearing conversations, being parts of conversation. And I, I mentioned this uh, little thought to Brother George, and he says, Brother Paul, that's not the way everyone takes it. He took me back in history, as it were, laid the whole foundation of what was happening, carried it right on through, give me a whole different perspective of, of what we're looking at. So it's nice and, uh, and uh, it's always good. Um, I'm happy myself to be able to count Brother George as a friend. So uh, be praying for this services. And uh, so Saturday evening, February 6th, 7 p.m., questions and answers. So please turn them in. And then we'll have a regular Sunday service. And then Brother George will be, unfortunately, not able to stay very long. He'll be going home. So, amen. 
Let's uh, just uh, stand and go into the Word. I want to speak to you once again on the overall thought of redemption's manifestation. Uh, I want to talk to you. This will be a uh, multi-part part here. uh, The tale of two queens Uh, is not something that we can preach in one service and do it justice. Uh, So what we're going to do is come and and, uh, uh, it will be very familiar to you. Uh, We just want to touch, but you see my brother and sister in studying uh, the message. Uh, You you always have a foundation of scripture. You study the message. You realize that uh, when they say history repeats itself, that is a true statement because we get to see now by God's grace, Brother David said, Revelation allows us to look in the Word and realize the very spirits that were moving at a certain time and place have come back on the scene again. And uh, that is good, because the Holy Ghost fell on the day of Pentecost, and He's falling here with us in our Pentecost. Amen. And we see the power of God moving, stirring people, amen, answering questions. Prophet of God said, if there's a biblical question, there is a biblical answer. Amen. So we don't have to assume and we don't have to, to uh, give up. We can just wait upon the Lord. Let's turn in the book of Esther. And uh, like I said, this will be very familiar. Speaking of Vashti. And, um, you know, I want you to remember now in our, in our graph that we have or the basis we're looking at, Near, never, 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 not nearly as exciting to talk about the negative side of it. It is talk about the bride of Christ, right? To talk about revelation and the opening of the word, overcoming power, rapturing faith, all of these things, my brother and sister, are, are the very uh, cream, you might say, to a son or daughter of God. But yet, we always want to lay a good, solid foundation. And, um, you know, sometimes we, we realize little things may be lacking uh, and uh, the foundation points that we need to make and God help us that we build a complete foundation under the word, not just our pet topics. And um, so let's just start here. Now, the first 10 verses are laying the foundation here of, of what is coming to pass uh, uh, and how this come to pass that Vashti would find herself in this position. We'll start with verse 11. To bring Vashti the queen before the king with the crown royal, to show the people and the princes her beauty, for she was fair to look on. But the queen Vashti refused to come at the king's commandment by his chamberlains. Therefore was the king very wroth, and his anger burned in him. Then the king said to the wise men, which knew the times. Interesting insertion. In this scripture, they knew the times. For so was the king's manner towards all that knew law and judgment. And the next unto him, now I'm going to just totally slaughter these words. I I even looked at some of them and their pronunciation and, and three minutes later I couldn't articulate it. And next to him was Carthentia, Sethtar, Admatha, Tarshish, Miris, Mersana and Mimican, the seven princes of Persia and Media, which saw the king's face, which sat the first in the kingdom. What shall we do unto the queen Vashti according to the law, because she hath not performed the commandment of the king Ahasuerus by the chamberlains? And Mimican answered before the king and the princes, Vashti the queen hath not done wrong to the king only, now, saints, I'm going to ask you today, you got to look beyond the surface of this story. She's not done wrong to the king only, but also to all the princes and to all the people that are in all the provinces of the king Hazarus. For this deed of the queen shall come abroad unto all women. Now, let's not forget, sisters, the representation of the church as a woman. For the deed of this queen shall come abroad into all women, so that they shall despise their husband in their eyes when it shall be reported. 
the king Ahasuerus commanded Vashti the queen to be brought in before him, but she came not. Likewise shall the ladies of Persia and Media say this day unto all the king's princes, which have heard the deed of the queen, thus shall there arise too much contempt and wrath. If it please the king, let there go a royal commandment from him, and let it be written among the laws of the Persians and the Medes, and that it not be altered, that Vashti come no more before the king Ahasuerus, and let the king give her royal estate unto another that is better than she. Amen. And when the king's decree which he shall make shall be published throughout all his empire, for it is great, and truly it is great. Yes, it is. All the wives shall give their husbands honor, both to great and small. And the saying pleased the king and the princes, and the king did according to the word of Mimikin. For he sent letters into all the king's provinces, and to every province according to the writing thereof, and to every people after their language, and every man should bear rule in his own house, and that it should be published according to the language of every people. Amen. The word of God says that this Bible, this word, which is the written words of God, must go to every nation, kindred, and tongue. Amen. Heavenly Father, we ask You today, Lord, just help me articulate these thoughts, Lord, that I've been studying and trying to understand, Lord, to have a correct view of, a correct vision of. We ask, Father, that You would just move in our midst today. Guide us. Lord, let us speak only according to Thy Word, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. So, as we would look at this story, my brother and sister, I just felt a, a great connection, as it were, and reached out to me, that we would be looking in not those days so long ago, but we would be looking into the season that we live in now and how that we would uh, be able to take and, and um, grasp the spirits, amen, as it is, you know, we recognize that spirits come and go as it were, but they don't die. So you'll see a spirit in an age, but it'll appear once again. And if we remember, my brother and sister, at this time that we are living in is the evidence of the pale horse rider, which was a mixture of all of those deceptive spirits of the ages that had come into our time, and, and they're all mixed together. And it's not darkness, it's not absolute evil that on its appearance, it's not good, it's just this mixture. And people then, because of the spirits of the age, are comfortable because the Scripture says that they would have the very appearance of godliness. But they would so deny the power... So appearances are good. In the business world, I like to read and I like to do that. And they tell you that you have just a small fleeting opportunity to impress someone. Your appearance and how you present yourself, how you articulate yourself gives you just a moment to leave the impression with that person. But my brother and sister, impressions are not nearly as important as the character behind the individual. A, a nice suit, an articulate language, a, a, a polite behavior, all of these things can leave an image, but it does not necessarily mean that the person is what that image represents. And so as we look at this, I want to just go uh, through here kind of uh, steady as we would go today. I still want to come back to verse 13. And we recognize the king said to the wise men, which knew the times. My brother and sister, I tell you, it is a wise man or woman in the day that we live in that knows the times that we are living in. 
Amen. If we miss the sign of the time, then we can look, my brother and sister, at the Word of God. We can read it as a historical factor. We can take all of these things, but when by revelation we recognize that it is here, and I'm going to just throw this little nugget out because it will come in the next service or two concerning uh, the tale of two queens. But you see, Esther comes in the same season, in the same circumstances of, of a life, and uh, she is reminded by Mordecai that it is for a time such as this. And I want to remind you as the bride of Christ that it is for a time such as this that you are come. Amen. God wanted you in another age. That's where you would have been. But it is in this day, this age, these circumstances, these temptations, and this overcoming power of the Holy Ghost that is the season God chose for you and I. Amen. We should not stop and say, well, I hope or I would uh, try to. I'll try to be the overcomer. I'll try. No. No, declare what God's thought of you. Declare what God's plan was for you. I am the overcomer. I am the one chosen for this day. And that reminds me, we did not lift them up, Brother Chris and Sister Kristen and the family, off spending a, a few short days together uh, in a little holiday. I want to remember them in prayer. Amen. So you look at this and realize that it's a wise man that knows the times. And so we see how this action took place. We see what, what is coming and, and how that there is a, a reaction to this action. Now I can assure you, my brother and sister, that Vashti's response was not something that just popped up. It was not some sudden act of rebellion, but it is something that had started to raise up into her. Now look at Vashti herself. She had been raised to the very pinnacle. Amen. Now the pinnacle for her was queen. Amen. And she had been raised to the very pinnacle. She's the queen of the kingdom. She's got every benefit and every blessing of her position. Now, I just want to remind you not to go into this, but it's just come upon my mind to remind you that the prophet of God says that you and I are living below. Come on, queen. Amen. Let's accept all that God has given to us in our position. Amen. Amen. We should possess all that is in there. Now look at this. See, she had every benefit and every blessing of her position. She had authority, my brother and sister, to call and to send and desire something, no doubt the finest of clothes and whatever might have been uh, uh, that she would have desired, the finest of food, uh, and uh, to elevate her friends, as it were, around her. But the problem Vashti had was she forgot how she got there. Vashti did not become the queen upon her own merit. She had become the queen upon the king's favor. That's right. And when she came to the place that she no longer cared about the quality and merit of the king's favor, she felt that she had rose up to a place that she in herself was self-sufficient. Now I want you to understand, and, and we'll hit on this in, in, uh, in future services here, but my brother and sister, the prophet of God, in, through the seals, you'll find it in the seals, you will find it in the church ages, you'll find where God is dealing with the fact that there is on the earth today one who calls herself queen. She's vocal about this. She says that she is the queen of heaven. But then the prophet of God comes, and this is actually what brought me into this story uh, of the tale of two queens, is there is one there, my brother and sister, that is vocal. She has told the world of her delicacies, of the things that she's partaken in, but she forgot how she got there, and so now she believes she is self-sufficient. She believes that she has the authority, and she has the position to do anything she pleases. But we see now that Vashti, forgetting how she got there, she forgot who had placed her in that position. And I've spoken on this in the church, and no doubt will again at some point in time. But we must remember, my brother and sister, the difference of these relationships is so obvious or so apparent. It was that Vashti 
didn't even want to come when called. But we will look at the life of Esther. And when Esther saw a need, when Esther saw something she desired, she went. What a difference. One had to be called and one had a desire to come to the presence. Amen. What a difference, my brother and sister, that makes. And people can say, well, we are Christians, and if God wants something from me, then, you know, He can let me know. I've heard people make statements like that. But I tell you, I believe this bride of Christ in this last age is there saying, you know what, my Lord, my King, what can I do for you? How can I serve you? What can, uh, what can I do that would bring pleasure to you? She's not there living by a book of rules that says on this day, this time, this place, this way. I have to do something. But she has a heart's desire to want to be in the presence of that king. And if I'm not careful, I'll preach myself uh, too far ahead here. Uh, meaning as in next week or week after. So, you see, by the reason of her her position, she was brought up into this position where she was, as it were, the first lady of the nation. And it's there that I find interesting, and I want to throw out to you, that it is because she was beautiful. Now, we'll see actually a metamorphosis or transition in this story of the nature of the whole picture. But you see, the king says, I want to show you guys how beautiful my wife is. Lest it would trouble some of you, I won't go into a great extent of my imagination of the beauty of Vashti. She must have had hair that was not comparable anywhere in the kingdom. She must have had those looks. Go study it. Brother Branham even sometimes makes some pretty bold statements. A fine figure of a woman. Amen? I'll just leave it at that. But here's Vashti satisfying, no doubt, every imagination of what one might say is a beautiful woman. But you notice, not just here in these verses, but going all through that, not one mention of her character. Not one mention of her being called, unless becoming atomic fodder is a calling. Not one mention of her calling. Not one mention of what she was actually doing for the kingdom, except for sowing the seeds of rebellion. That would be the legacy of Vashti, would be that she was sowing the seeds of rebellion. Now let's just have our little tea party, everyone. And a chamberlain comes and says, the king has called for you to come. You can't tell me there's not influence when she in front of them said, leave, I'm not coming. Let me type that to you today in the moving of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit coming down in our presence, coming in our church services, coming in our lives, however it might come, and we refuse to respond. You see how that seed of rebellion can come in and, and uh, you know, it would be in reading and studying here, uh, coming across some lovely quotes and, you know, Brother Branham ties one of those to how in the wooing, how Satan coming and wooing this bride of Christ, he come in there and he wooed her with lovers. And then Brother Branham types those lovers right into the Trinity. You see, he wooed them into that and then they won't move from that even though the Scripture is right in front of them and to realize that Acts 2.38 is the fulfillment of the book of Matthew. 28.19 is not a standalone, my brother and sister. Acts 2.38 is the fulfillment or the explanation of that and it comes down but they won't move. They've been wooed to that and they refuse to move from that. 
And so then they have to cut God up in three pieces and they've got to convolute Him. And yet history, if you'll study these things out and we'll touch on them in a, in a future service because Brother Branham ties this together. But you'll see, my brother and sister, what we call Mariology today, which is where they have lifted up and worship Mary as the Queen of Heaven. My brother and sister, it is actually a demonic spirit that was taken from sun gods and moon gods and all of these things. And then they said, we got to get this somehow into modern day Christianity. So they just change names, but they don't change the spirit. Amen. Amen. So I can tell you that. Let me just flip this over to you. Amen. We don't use the same name. We don't have a Vashti in the church. But we have Vashti spirit. And so you just change the names, but the spirit remains the same. And so then we move on and we call that religion. But you see, when one comes to a place where there is, you might say, authority. When there is influence. The prophet of God, I read the quote to you the other day, I do believe the prophet of God says whenever we come into a place to be an influence for God, we must humble ourselves daily. That we would not be lifted up and not forget the reason of our position. Not forget how it is that we got here. How it is that our sin and past life is behind us to come and just be religious people. Amen. You see... As I said before, nothing's mentioned of her character, only her beauty. Now there is a quotation that says, Time takes away beauty, but it reveals character. That's why I believe somebody, I know a sister that had an apron that used to say, Don't marry or something for beauty. How does that go, Sister Jerry? Remember Sister Linda had that? Amen. Don't marry for looks. Marry for cooking because looks don't last, but cooking does. <laughs> Something of that nature. Amen. I think I slaughtered that. But, you know, time will take the beauty away. The handsome man, I can give you quotations where Brother Brown's talking about I'll come in here and here's a, a young man and uh, here he is straight and tall and, and strong and, you know, uh, uh, just hair. And here's a, a young uh, sister in the beauty of life. And she's standing there so, so straight and so beautiful. And you come back in a few years and the man is uh, graying and, and stooped over. And the sister there is gray haired and stooped over from carrying these two or three babies. And so you just see the natural culmination of life brings about this transition in our lives. Amen? And it don't matter. We can't circumvent it. You can go through life and eat the healthiest of of everything that you can eat and, uh, you know, do everything you want and you'll wake up one day, there'll be a gray hair there. Amen? And then you'll wake up another day and that gray hair left. Amen. So, you know, we have to be careful about how we place ourselves and how we do that. And we should not forget how we get here. Amen. I've got to this position. Now, in Romans, my brother and sister, the Romans, the the 12th uh, chapter, um, we would come here and take these words. For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you. Not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. Oh, I'll tell you, my brother and sister, I might not have the faith that you have been given. But I want you to know, I want to do everything I can to live to the utmost of the faith that God has given me. It is not me comparing to you, you uh, comparing to me, but you and I looking at what God has given us and saying, Lord, I want to fulfill all that you have called me to be. If you have called me to bring forth 30 fold, Lord, then Lord, I want to bring forth 30 fold. You called me to 50 fold. I want to bring forth 50 fold. If you have called me to a hundred, praise God, I want to bring forth a hundred fold. I want to be what you wanted me to be, not comparing to another. Because you see, the measure of faith dealt to one 
might be more or it might be less than what was dealt to you. Amen. Now, I'm going to just take this in this aspect to drive this point home. If we start comparing ourselves, well, I'm as spiritual as brother so-and-so. I'm as faithful. I read my Bible. I pray. I feel anointed as a spirit just as much as he does. Praise the Lord. I'm doing good. What if he's only been given a measure of faith to bring 50-fold, but God called you for a hundredfold? You're self-limiting yourself. But let me also turn it around. You've been given measure for 50-fold and you compare your life to 100-fold and you always are disappointed. You're always struggling. You're always depressed that you're not the kind of man that that one is. Why can't I be what he is? If God dealt him a greater measure of faith, my brother and sister, you cannot be that person. But God's not saying, well, I'm sorry I turned you out because you weren't what this person was. The only measure we have is to go to the will of God, the measure of faith dealt to us, what the Word said about us, and take a hold of that, my brother and sister, and live it to the extreme. And when I say the extreme, I mean if there is 50-fold there, you live it to 50-fold push until the limit. Not waiting for some other measure. But living to the measure of faith that was dealt to you. You see, the problem we have sometimes, we touched uh, touched on this the other day. If we're not careful, we get to feeling quite well of ourselves. We quite honestly tell ourselves That we are more than we are. Kind of reminds me years ago, and I say this in light, not judging the young man, but we had a young man that come and we had some work on the farm that needed done. And this young man says, yes, I know how to drive a tractor. And we said, okay, you're going to have these five people. We have this bean field that has to be rogued. It had two different kinds of beans in it. The one kind of bean was scattered randomly, some kind of a a cross somewhere along the line. And uh, we said, you're going to drive the tractor and uh, these guys are going to go and pull the plants that need to be taken out and they'll throw them on this deal mounted on the back of the tractor and you'll drive to the end. You have the ease of driving up and down the row uh, while they're pulling out the, the off type beans, but you have the labor of getting to the end and you have to shovel it all off by yourself. So, the trade-off. <laughs> Hope you follow this. The young man, okay, yeah, we can do that. We can do that. He gets on the tractor, grabs a hold of the shifter, <coughs> and we're like, he doesn't know what a clutch is. <laughs> have you ever drove a tractor before? Yes, yes. What kind? Well, I admit, I drove a tractor that you just pushed the little pedal forward and it drove. You see, it's human nature to raise ourselves up into a higher place than we really are. I think that's a lot about how the rich ruler ended up where he was at. Is he actually had accounted more to himself You see, King Ahasuerus recognized the effect that rebellion would have on his kingdom. My brother and sister, the prophet of God in preaching, you can follow this continuity uh, if you're aware of it all through his sermons. You see, what Brother Branham was doing as he was dealing with the denominations in the early times, he was trying to get them just to be aware of of how the seed of discrepancy had come into the church. He wasn't accusing them of being the seed of discrepancy. He wasn't accusing them of being anointed with an antichrist spirit. He wanted them to be aware. But the season for being aware and the season for action, my brother and sister, are interconnected. If you are aware, there comes a time that you must act upon that. You can't sit back and say, praise the Lord, if I do this, I will make a rapture 
and then just talk about it. There has to be an action take place. And King Ahasuerus recognizes the effect that this spirit of rebellion would have on his church. And he said, if this is continued in our church, it's going to produce a church that puts Christ on the outside. Amen. Amen. Wanting to get in, but not in. And the people talking about Him, talking about what He can do, what He has done, and what He will do in the future, but wouldn't even let Him inside to do the work. See, that spirit of rebellion comes in such a fashion. That's why Brother Branham said that a religious spirit is the most dangerous of all the spirits. Because it's the one that talks about God, glorifies God, but won't serve Him. And when we talk about serving, my brother and sister, anything short of 100% is not true service. Have you ever been in a restaurant? I'll tell you, I I got to experience something. It was a little bit daunting in one sense, but um, uh, I accepted the challenge. And when we were in Phoenix, uh, Brother Ron Peterson, he said, uh, Brother Paul, tomorrow morning, uh, the old brothers meet for breakfast over here at this place. You want to come? And I was like, I'm not an old brother, but I wanted breakfast, so I, I went. And we got there, and my brother and sister, I want to drive this point to you, what service is. Now, this is a two-edged sword when we talk about it in the natural. So here's this fairly long table full of brothers. I was by far the youngest there, just to, you know. But this whole table full of old brothers, and, and the young lady comes, and obviously she knew all of these guys, call them by name and whatnot and ask them if they wanted their, regular, or their coffee the regular way. Did they want their orange juice with a t- touch of Sprite? Do they want this? Do you want that? And she obviously knew that. And this young lady, you, you just hardly would think about something and she, she would have it right there. And then she went to take orders and um, some of the brothers were like, I'm going to eat something different today. And then they went right back to their conversation. And finally, she comes back to them. Do you know what you want? Oh, I haven't even looked at the menu. And this young lady just patiently stood there. She never expressed one bit of attitude. One brother apologizes. Saints, I want you to catch this. And she looked at him and says, My job is to serve you. Oh, that we could talk to our Lord Jesus like that. That we could bring from our heart, Lord, my job. What I was called on this earth to do, Lord, is not have an attitude. But my job is to serve you. Anyway, lovely young lady. We're all done. I hope you see the humor of this. I decided in the natural I saw a reason why she's so happy to wait on these. And practically every one of those brothers got up, they ordered a $10 breakfast and gave her a $20 tip. And when they walked out of there, she's like, see you guys next Monday. Come back. But my brother and sister, if, I, if you could catch the point I'm trying to make. See, she recognized she didn't have an assurance that the tip would be what it was. But she had an attitude or, or an expression of, I'm going to serve you first and see what the reward will be afterward. Oh, I tell you, my brother and sister, we as sons and daughters of God, we need to not question what the reward is going to be. We need to not focus, oh Lord, if I serve you, do I get to have eternal life? We need to serve Him from the depths of our heart because there's a desire as the bride of Christ to serve Him. Oh, hallelujah. If I serve my husband, will he give me nice clothes and nice this and nice that? No, my brother and sister, love your husband. Amen. Do all that you can. Serve your husband. Amen. And if he doesn't respond like you think, the prophet of God said, grab him by the shirt front and tell him if he doesn't change. No. He said, pray. That's what changes things. 
Now look at this. I'll get sidetracked and start preaching to our sisters. Now you sisters start serving better. Wait, you already serve better than we serve you. So anyway, we'll go on. I didn't say that, did I? See, he recognized the effect that rebellion would have on his kingdom. And we see perfectly, my brother and sister, I hope you're in tune with me. Because you start studying the message, you'll see this reoccurring thing popping up over and over and over and over again. How the people wanted God to perform first and they would serve Him after. When the reality was, God says, serve me first and I reward you. I will give you even to the half of my kingdom by a reward, eternal life for your service, for your love, for your adoration. But we as humans want to see something first. And as we reference and cross-reference this, we recognize the connection between the Spirit and the church. We'll see how that the churches in the day, amen, Brother Branham preaching in the indictment and other places, my brother and sister, we're looking at today how the church has come and they have said, you know what, we, we want to serve God, we want to worship God, we want to be identified with God, but we want to really run this our own way. Amen. The scripture types it out in the parable or story, as it were, of seven uh, women, one husband. You don't have to provide for us. You don't have to do nothing for us. We just want your name. And that's what we have in the world today is churches, amen, that simply are wanting to do what they want to do, but they want to claim the name of Jesus Christ. Saints of grace, let's make sure we never go there. Let's make sure that we serve God because we want to be personally identified with Him. We want to be known as His wife, hence the the term bride. Amen? That we take this. So we recognize the connection between the Spirit and the church. When the Holy Spirit has liberty, you will find a church that is filled with the power of Almighty God. You'll see answered prayers. You'll see people happy to be serving God. When you find a church that has deviated into their own interpretation of what God desires for this day, my brother and sister, you will find a church that is starting to operate in its own authority. And when God says, come, they can look at Him and say, I ain't coming. See, that spirit, that attitude is there. I ain't coming. And they believe that there's no consequence. But we see in this story of Ahasuerus, my brother and sister, he knew if that spirit spread through the kingdom, that then he would just lose it all. That it would all fall apart. And hence he says, I have to do something. Now, my wise men... My men who recognize the season, the time that we're in, what do we do? And they said, you, what you've got to do is let it be known that she no longer is even considered royalty. I would say there would be nothing worse in a position to walk around the rest of your life saying, I once was the queen, past tense. Not identified in the day that I am the queen. But I once was the queen. Why are you no longer the queen? Because I wouldn't listen to the king. Now look through the scripture, saints. See how that the prophet of God breaks this all down and shows clearly how that at one point in time could be identified we are the queen. They still say, I'm the queen of heaven. But they no longer have any authority in the kingdom of God. Amen. They have lost all authority. They have been put out. And while she might have still used his name, she was no longer of him. Are you with me? You see, we had, well, let me tie this together here. Get ahead of myself too far. Revelations 3.17. See, this would identify the spirit of our day, but my brother and sister, it also identify the spirit of Vashti. Because thou sayest, I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing. And knowest not that after you have rejected the king, you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. You realize what happened to Vashti? They didn't take her out in the backside of the desert and throw her out there for the wild dogs. Saints, they actually took her to the far corner of the king's house and they put her there and she never fellowshiped in the body of believers again 
She never saw the king again. She never talked to the king again. Every communication, what you might say, is Vashti became a prisoner of her own creation. And you'll find, my brother and sister, when we as sons and daughters of God dealing with the things of life, I'm going to speak straight to you here. We deal with the things of life, the issues of weaknesses of our flesh. And when God comes and says, I'll deliver you of that, and we won't respond to the Holy Spirit, we will end up in a prison of our own creation. And people will say it was God's fault. It was the church's fault. It was the pastor's fault. My brother and sister, it is of their own creation. Vast she could have said yes, just as easy as she said no. And you and I can say yes just as easy as we can say no. And so we don't want to come to a place in our life where we look and say, I'm in this position because of this message of the hour. I'm here because of this person and because of that person. No, you had a choice, yes and no. Amen. Amen. And oftentimes we say no because of our feelings, our emotion, our weaknesses, our little complexes. We say no because it requires radical change in our life. We say no because it will cause us to actually be exposed to the body of believers. I've shared this before and I just make note of this. When you see the Holy Ghost moving in the midst of a people, you will see people breaking away from bonds that have held them. I remember being back east. I'll just kind of keep it vague. Uh, Probably last time I shared this, I spoke too much. Forgive me. But my brother and sister, the power of God starting to move when the Holy Ghost is unleashed and people are willing to say, Oh Lord, speak to me. And families coming up and and speaking to Brother Jewel. Brother Jewel just asked me to be part of it. And, And it's there and they're speaking the deep secrets. Of the problems of their families. Any volunteers? You know why there isn't in the flesh? Because we're ashamed, embarrassed. We don't want the world to know that. But you know what happens when the Holy Ghost starts to move? The Holy Ghost comes and moves upon the believer so strongly. They want to be right with God more than they care what you think about them. They want to be right with God and be delivered of this spirit more than they care what any human on earth might say about them. But you see, it's got to break through the power of pride and self-preservation to get into that element. And then they come and they confess deep, dark secrets that you say, Oh my goodness, really, can that be true? Well, it can be true, my brother and sister, because somewhere along the line they said no. But oh God, rich in mercy, come along. And the anointing of the Holy Ghost moves upon them and they say, Yes, Lord, I want free. Yes, Lord, I want delivered. Yes, Lord, I want the Holy Ghost. And God comes and delivers them. And they stay delivered. Hallelujah. That's the point, my brother and sister. Getting out of prison for the day is not a pardon. Hallelujah. Two queens. Two natures. Completely opposite in character. This queen replaced by another. We'll get deeper into these things as we look at the church ages and look at what Brother Brown says about these things. But this queen has been replaced by another. Now look what it is. She got replaced with a queen that fit the nature of the king. Oh, hallelujah. Not a rebellious queen. Not a queen that says, it's my way. Ah, anyway. Lord, forgive me. Song of my childhood just popped in my head. I promise. I, I won't speak it out, okay? You won't have to spank your kids to get them to quit singing that. You see, this queen replaced with another. God didn't just throw another person in there. God chose one that fits so perfectly for the season coming. Not a queen that fit the idea of a queen of days gone by, but a queen that was fit to rule in Laodicea. Not to, li- to, 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 to rule back somewhere else. 
but Laodicea. She's a queen that was chose for Laodicea. Amen. This true queen is so perfectly tailored. Now, I hope you follow what I mean by tailored. So she is so perfectly formed to fit this, other, this, this king. Amen. She wasn't of her own nature trying to be pressed into, but she was tailored to fit the very nature of the king. And she is so perfect. Oh, I hope you get this. She is so perfect in his sight. She, he thinks she is him. Come on, did you catch that? She is so perfect in his sight that the king looks at her and says, She is me. I am her. She is me. Amen. That's where the prophet of God speaks these words out of Scripture. Talks about these things, right? Bone of his bone. Amen. Spirit of his spirit. Flesh of his flesh. Right? Because she is him. Hallelujah. He's not looking at something that hoping one day she will be like him. But he sees her and says, she is me. This bride of mine, this queen of mine is me. Hallelujah. So conformed to the word of God. So much so here. I am a little ahead of myself. Forgive me. We'll come upon these things again. But amen. So much like the king. His nature. His desire. What he longed for. So much like him. He says I'm going to give you an equal place in my kingdom. My brother and sister. Do you know in business. In business. If you want to form a corporation. You want to form an LLC or whatever. You be real careful if you have partners that aren't flesh and blood. And maybe even them. But uh, you know. You, you want to. Leave yourself even the most margin of control. Start an LLC. Brother Trevor and I are going to go into business together building tiddlywinks. I want 51% of the business. Brother Trevor, if he has any sense, is going to say, I want 51%. Holds that scepter how? Even to the 50 50 of my kingdom. A queen with a nature that he can trust. A queen with a character that he doesn't have to question what she's going to do. He knows that she cares about him and his kingdom. She's going to serve him. In fact, she's going to become an advisor to him. Honey, do you see this? That that comes out, my brother and sister, you know, in the story of Esther. She says, you know what? This guy's going to wreck wreck the kingdom. He's going to cause all kinds of divide and trouble and murder and death and whatever else. And I can't let that happen to my husband's kingdom. Now you can say, well, it was all about the Jews. No, my brother and sister, if you look, study and find the continuity, she was looking out for her husband's kingdom. In more than one way. Right? Right? Because she was a queen of heaven and a queen to a king. Hallelujah. She's watching out for that. She cares. Given an equal place in the kingdom. See, one living only of the blessings of the kingdom... And one desiring to fulfill all the king asked of her. See, this is the tale of two queens. Two spirits in the framework of the Christian church. There's two queens on the earth today, my brother and sister. There's two queens. One making her profession that she's queen. And one that Almighty God says, this is my queen. I don't want to be the one standing around saying, I'm the queen, I'm the queen, I'm the queen. And everybody knows you're not. Amen. But to be one where the king would say, this is my queen. And I have, according to the word, even given to her the half of the kingdom. Because she will rule and reign with me. Hallelujah. Now I'm going to get very off into this and we'll touch it again. But the prophet of God talking about how it is, my brother and sister, this bride of Christ. She's not going to go through this judgment. She's already left. And then she comes back to sit with him in the judgment. 
Hallelujah. So you're going to be in judgment, my brother and sister, but you're going to be there with your king. And you're going to have a a divine judgment. You're going to have a divine understanding. You're going to have a divine compassion. Now, this will just touch on this, and I don't mean to make a point, but you hear a lot of people. Guy holds the door for him. Praise the Lord. It's like a cup of cold water. He's going to have eternal life. I've run into people that have dispensed eternal life to everything under the sun, my brother and sister. For everything under the sun. But I tell you, on that day, it will be a divine judgment. It won't be our neighbor was so kind to us. Because see, you're going to have a hard time tying together a man who's blasphemous and gave you a bag of potatoes, so therefore he's got eternal life. You're going to have a hard time in the natural, right. b- balancing these things out. Yeah. But on that day, you, bride, queen, are going to sit there with a divine Amen. judgment. Amen? Not an emotional judgment. Not an analytical judgment. Not a judgment from history, but a divine judgment that you will be able to speak according to the Word of God and the will of God. Why? Because you know the mind of your husband. Oh, isn't that beautiful to know the mind of your husband? I tell you, my brother and sister, I find it so lovely in the natural. Amen. Now, I've seen brothers, you know, this one brother told me, he says, now, Brother Paul, he says, I want you to understand something. He said, I I act annoyed in public when my wife finishes my sentences. I was like, I noticed that. But he said, truly, I'm actually pleased. Because my wife knows me so well. The same wife who finishes my sentences knows exactly how I like my socks folded. She knows exactly how I like my breakfast. She knows exactly how I like my clothes in a closet. She knows exactly how that when we're going on a trip, that I like to leave at an exact time. And she's always ready. He said, so, just to keep her unsettled, you know how old men get. (laughs) Keep her unsettled, I always act grumpy. Can't I finish my own sentence? I've been there before when the sister was like, you're not capable. And then they smile at each other and hold hands as they walk off. Oh my, look. A tale of two queens, two spirits in this framework of the church. Let me hurry right along here. Now, we have different religions and we have different motives and different theologies. But our Christian religion is based solemnly upon death, burial, and resurrection and the second coming of the Lord. Oh, it's it's an important question. And as we are now approaching to my most sincere thoughts, we are living in the very shadows of His second coming. There, to my way of seeing it by the light of the Scripture, there is not one hope left for the church outside of the second coming of the Lord. Now, my brother and sister, do you follow that? Some people say, see, there's just no hope. That's not what he's saying. The second coming of the Lord. But let me divide this down in two parts. There is His spiritual or presence that has come, which some people just freak out and they're like, oh, oh, presence, perusia. Oh, this is horrible. It's a false thing. No, perusia is true. The misuse of perusia, parousia, however you want to say it. The misuse of that is false. But the very fact that God has come right down in our presence and is present with us this morning is an absolute biblical promise of Almighty God. He said, I'll be with you, even in you. Amen. So His presence is here. Now those who took that doctrine and said, God's already come and we can act like a bunch of rebels because it's already done deal. So now we can go act like the world because we've been sealed. My brother and sister, you talk about an anointing that has to be upon these people that say, I, I've got the Holy Ghost, but I can now have permission to act like the devil. Mm, don't make a lick of sense, does it? Amen. So, you know, it's like, well, I'm a carpenter, but I like to burn my work down. Yeah. 
You see, the presence of Almighty God once in the heart and mind and soul of a son or daughter of God leaves them in such a love affair that is so deep that as the prophet of God says, now I'm getting ready to go to Africa. And if I was to go and get a hold of my wife and tell her now, my dear wife, if you go with any other men, if you do this, if you flirt, if you this, that, and the other, when I come home, you're divorced. And then he turns it right around and says, and she reaches up and gets a hold of front of my shirt and says, Mr. Branham, if you are over there and you do anything and you this, that, and the other, when you come home, you're going to be divorced. And the prophet of God says, wouldn't that be a lovely home? And then Brother Brown says, and I wouldn't hurt her for nothing because I love her. Now look at this relationship as a Christian, my brother and sister. Even if these Perugia people that have this idea that now because God's come and they're sealed, they can behave any old wicked old way, my brother and sister, they defy the very words of a prophet they say they believe. See, that shows you right there that that spirit is not right because you can't take it through the word. So I tell you, here we are, my brother and sister, living in a time, the second coming of the Lord. I'm here to declare you. There'll be a lot of people that might question and say, Brother Paul, you don't know what you're talking about. But I'm here to tell you this morning, He is here. The prophet of God himself said, He is here. Is that the physical coming of the Lord? No, my brother and sister, it is not. But He said that He would come, anoint you and I with His Holy Spirit. He would come and manifest Himself to us. And the prophet of God says these different ways that God comes and shows Himself. He called it in Morphe. When He comes in Morphe, it's all God. So God moving in our presence, the Holy Spirit dealing with our young people, dealing with our old people, dealing with everyone. And we say that, oh, my brother and sister, you imagine if you just pull, oh, well, it's our emotion. It's not the presence of God. You know what you become in that scenario? Callous. You become so calloused that you'd say, I don't need to be moved. I've got the Holy Ghost. I can be angry, demanding, rude, and it doesn't matter. It does matter. The prophet of God didn't make that references and influence of the Holy Ghost being a dove just to fill up time in a church service. He was speaking to the very nature that we would search for and long for. And desire to become. As we're now approaching my most sincere thoughts. We're living in the very shadow of the second coming. There to my feelings it is by the light of the scripture. There is not one hope left for the church. Outside of the second coming of the Lord. I want you to think about the day we're living in right now. Right here in the United States. The world is in its wild pandemonic condition. Now that word my brother and sister. Is not pandemic It is rooted in pandemonium. Yes, sir. All through my childhood, my early adulthood, and unfortunately late adulthood, every person who ever climbed the fence at the congressional buildings got shot dead. Until now. And they moved the barricades out of their way. And somehow, there's an investigation, somehow the side doors on the portico of the congressional building were just all unlocked. A total breach of protocol and security that's taken place for 200 years just happened to happen. And a man gets the Congressional Medal of Freedom for telling them people, you can't come in here. We don't even know what a hero is anymore. And a poor woman who just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time, had no business being there, but is about as dangerous as a bookend, gets shot dead. While people ripping computers off of desks Monitors off of walls, paintings off of walls, waltz right out. Nothing happened. If this doesn't fit pandemonium, I don't know what does. 
It's chaos, my brother and sister. Yeah. The world in its wild, I don't know if I'm even pronouncing it right. Y'all forgive me. That's what happens when you ignore school and then drop out of it. This wild pandemonic condition has got completely out of control of every man-made organization in the world. Kings cannot hold their subjects no more. Neither can dictators hold their subjects anymore. Democracy cannot hold its subjects anymore. And there is no hope left but the second coming of the Lord Jesus. I tell you what, I believe this was spoken for this hour right here. Amen. Absolute pandemonium. This man burns a car. He's giving an expression of protest. This man burns a car. He's a domestic terrorist. If that is not pandemonium, even the leadership is in absolute confusion. They don't know right from wrong, left from right. They don't know good from evil, evil from good. We are living in the time, my brother and sister. This was spoken in 1957, but the title to me declares it all. At the second coming of the Lord. Hallelujah. We're going to see this kind of things happening. And this is where we are at today. Amen. We are at. I, I, you know what? I could say this, this right here could be pulled out and made into a, 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 what would you call it? I'm trying to think of the words. Amen. A current events. This could be brought in, taught to our homeschool kids and public school kids as a current event. This is what's happening. A prophet of God stood up under the anointing, preached the word, and said, you're going to see complete pandemonium come into our nation. You're going to see illogical things. You're going to see things that are so far out of the word of God, my brother and sister, that it will just boggle your mind, might even terrify you. But don't worry. When these things appear, look up. Look up, your redemption draweth nigh. Why? The spirit of two queens. Now, I won't go into it because it's a little deeper and I'm not one that usually likes to just jump into all these things. But my brother and sister, the prophet's testimony of a season coming of a leadership. There's never been an inauguration with so many women with purple dresses on. The has been, the wannabe. Now I say this with a little humor, please forgive me. You need to make sure when you start looking at this stuff and making up your mind that you look at it from God's view, not our view. Because I would say none of these apply because none of them are beautiful. But you see, we don't understand exactly the words the prophet was anointed when he was talking about a beautiful woman. In what context was that beautiful? In what way was that expressed? I honestly have to say, I would not know. I would not know. So any one of them that was there might have completely fulfilled that. Or maybe none of them did. But it doesn't matter, because I can give you a quote right now where Brother Branham said he's going to come maybe, maybe in, 50, uh, in 25 years, maybe in 50 years, maybe 100. Well, do the math from that date. We've got a ways to go. Hallelujah. Sister Vika, I don't know if you're ready right now or not, but... Christ the mystery, or Christ revealed in His own word, I mean. Now the next thing happened, we're going to shift corners right here, saints. It's when it's all gathered up into that one person, Jesus Christ. Bride and body. At the physical return of the Lord Jesus, making His three times when He's brought to earth, killed, crucified, raised up, manifesting Himself in the form of His body, which is His bride. Don't ever let somebody try to take away the significance of who you are in this message. Okay? And now look, I know I'm misunderstood and it sounds like I'm kind of anti or pushing back, but I'm not. I believe in balance. 
Amen. But you look at this, my brother and sister, a prophet of God clearly saying right now that is manifesting himself. Am I reading the right words? In the form of his body, which is his bride. So what we have right here, it's not all about a prophet that brought a message. There has to be a bride to fulfill this form, this position, this place, this identity. What other word can I use to fill in that place? My brother and sister, there has to be a bride that will be part of that body, will be blended together with our Lord Jesus Christ and His bride. Remember I made the comment earlier that Esther would be one that was such of the nature, such as the form. She was such that she would just mold or fit right in there and become one with her King. Amen. That's you and I. We have been formed. We have been tailored. That's the word I'm looking for. We've been tailored by the Word of God. Not man's form. Not man's idea. Not man's manipulation. Can we say amen? to that. That we are so tailored by the Word of God, the moving of the Holy Spirit, that we blend into our Lord Jesus Christ and we become one with Him. Amen. We're not off to the side. We're not secondary to the show. God pulled it right in and said, you know what? You are flesh of my flesh, bone of my bone, spirit of my spirit. You are me. I am you. Hallelujah. And it's there, see, which is His bride, the woman. You get it? She is part of His body. And the woman and the man is just so close together till they're just almost. They are the same. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Look what the prophet of God did. He come along and put a little quantifier on there. They ought to be anyhow. Amen. And I'd say to anyone that's married and they don't have that kind of relationship, husband and wife, do something about it. Because it is possible to become so close that you are one in spirit, in mind, not in the physical body, but in a spiritual body to be part of the body, the kingdom of Almighty God. The prophet of God says this body can't move without all its parts. Oh, hallelujah. They ought to be anyhow. There they are, see. They just exactly manifested the same. You catch the English of that? It's talking about the Lord Jesus. And His wife, the bride. The woman. Amen. Just exactly manifested the same. There's none of this the Lord told me to do something. I know it doesn't seem, it seems contrary to the Word. But the Lord told me to. No, no, they're going to manifest the same. We are going to become the picture of the Word. Oh, hallelujah. I'm sorry, I just get excited. She is a part of Him because she was taken out from Him. And the bride, way back when in the first century, you know, we had a, a perfect example of a church back there, way back when. Oh, we had the Dark Ages. That ain't what He said, is it? And the bride today. Do you believe in the literal manifestation of a message? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You see, if we don't, then we can take whatever part we want because it's abstract. Right. 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 And in the abstract, you can draw out whatever part of the abstract that you want to draw out. But in the literal manifestation. And the bride today is taken out from the body of Christ. That's why you always were different. That's why you never fit in in school. That's why you never fit in the world. You never fit in that because you're not of that body. You're of this body, the body of Jesus Christ. Amen. And the bride today is taken out from the body of Christ, which is acting and doing just exactly like he said it would do for this day. Brother Christian, our little conversation. This is why I believe this is the manifestation of the message of the hour. It is not because a sign took place here, a supernatural event here, a thought or a heart was discerned there, a healing took place over here. It's because this message is producing a people. A people who are not bound by fear, not bound by law, not bound by ideology. They are bound by a love for Jesus Christ. Amen. And he said this is what the Word would... the, The Bible said this is what would be produced in this day. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me just read it all in continuity here. And the bride today is taken out from the body of Christ, which is acting and doing just exactly like he said it would do for this day. The bride, the queen, king, 
and queen. Hallelujah. Well, there might be two queens on the earth, but one of them's got power and authority in half of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad God didn't just give you a worldly queen spirit? Amen. You know, the one that struts itself up and down the street and says, I am rich and I have need of nothing. Hallelujah. God help us. Sister Amy, would you come? Hallelujah. You know, saints, we have this lovely, lovely experience today. Our sister Vika. God been dealing with her heart. Amen. Amen. And as the Lord deals with our young people, old people, whoever it might be, people. Amen. As God deals with them, we want to, saints, create an atmosphere. What the word says we will be, let us be. We don't want to, we don't want to put any kind of men's ideas. Because when we put men's ideas into it, we end up with men's results. And so far, I look around this world, and they're not doing too well. More money, more wealth, more whatever than ever before, and less of God. But God said that He would pour Himself out. This is kind of a paraphrase. He'd pour Himself out in this generation. Did God have to hold back what He poured out? No, sir. He poured all of Himself. And we were here to receive that. And by God's grace and God's mercy, we've been filled and filled again. You know that man, I I don't know who he is. I just, the song, you know. I'm drinking from my saucer. Because my cup has overflowed. That ought to be the attitude that we have, saints. Don't look around and say, you know what? It just seems like I'm just a half full Christian. Forget about that. Get serious about serving God. Get down. Get sincere, get on fire, and God will pour down the blessings, oh my, like you have never witnessed in your life. And I'm not talking about let's judge it by uh, financial things. Let's judge it by our children serving God. Let's judge it by God coming down in our midst and healing us. Let's judge it by the Word coming to pass in you and I. Amen. Brother Jason, would you come? Just lead that. Sister Vika. Amen. Hallelujah. Would you come? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isn't it beautiful? Amen. Brother Alex, would you put Acts 2.38 up on the screen, please? Sorry, I forgot to add that to the bottom of my little list. You see, my brother and sister, we have been given this lovely commission. We've been given this just gorgeous beautiful position as sons and daughters of God and as the word would come to pass we would find ourselves looking in a world that increasingly is caught up I just read a little deal the other day this young girl she's 17 years old sings some kind of Spanish pop hip hop mixture whatever and sees a sensation. Everybody is so excited about this young girl. And the girl that fixes her hair is now famous. And the girl who does her fingernails is now famous. And the girl who picks her clothes is now famous. And now she believes she's an authority on what we should do. God help that little girl that someone with a brain would actually burst into her world and let her see she's not a substitute for God. And that we without God are empty, void, and vain. You know, the question they had, they asked Peter. Peter under inspiration, right? He has the key. He says unto them, repent. Repent. Be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin. And ye shall. I don't know that there's any more positive statement can be made than ye shall receive. What is it? A gift. In other words, God didn't just say by happenstance, but I have a gift for you. You've repented, you've been baptized, and now I've got this gift 
of my very own life, my very own nature that I'm presenting to you, that it will fill you up and you will become me and I will live in you and you being filled with me shall become me and you will live out and become a written epistle read of all men isn't this a beautiful oh how beautiful it is sister Vika if you would come I'll come on this side over here sweetheart it won't be as big a climb in there and uh, here you got it okay hallelujah my my oh my We stand here today upon the confession of Vika's desire of fulfillment of Acts 2.38 wanting to commit her life and make this vow to our Lord Jesus Christ. It was kind of funny, embarrassed Vika, but we're sitting in the house the other night and I'm talking and I'm finally like, okay Vika, if you understand you at least have to say amen and she's all kind of shy. Amen. You know, and a lovely time to see. Look at this, my brother and sister. Right here is what the devil is searching for. If he can come into that place of youth and put himself and establish himself, then he knows the Scripture when it declared, train up a child. But we're here, godly parents, God's presence in our lives, in the midst of our church, godly body of believers. Lord, help us all to set an example that we, as brothers and sisters in the flesh, do not leave the wrong example. Sister Vika, you will want to cross your arms and hold your nose like this. Upon your confession of faith of Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I am privileged to baptize you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'll help you out this time. Hallelujah. Now, Sister Vika is going to go get dried off. And then when we... When we, she comes back, we are going to welcome her into the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I've been changed. Well, I've been to the water and I've been baptized. I've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. I've been changed from the creature.
Are you washed? Amen. Do you know what it is? Yes. Not to have one guilty feeling. Yes. Thank Amen. you, Lord. Do you know what it is? Not to have one guilty feeling. Not to wonder where you're going when you die. Not to of the past. Not afraid of what tomorrow. And know the reason why Yes, that's just how it is When you go down in the water Cause by faith you believed in what you've heard It's no impossible dream You can start over clean Started your 
existence and where he's concerned there never was no sin for when God looks your way he no longer sees a sinner but a saint who's been washed white as snow not by anything we've done by the blood of God's own son And where he's concerned, there never was no sin. For when God looks your way, he no longer sees that sinner but a saint who's been washed white as snow. Not by anything we've done, but by the blood of Well, we want to welcome our sister Victoria into the kingdom of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. There'll be struggles. There'll be trials. There'll be temptations. There'll be times she feels like she's come short. But what we have is a body of believers right here that believe the word. And we believe in Vika. Amen. And right there is the difference this body of believers and the word the Holy Ghost God's promised word for our hour that's the holding power saints it's not in our flesh our flesh can't do it but it's in the body of our Lord Jesus Christ in the body of believers so I want to first invite her family to welcome her into the kingdom and then each one of you come welcome her in the kingdom and you can consider yourselves dismissed when this is finished. But never let this moment pass from our heart. Because we have right here a daughter of God. We believe that. Always will. Always have. Amen. God bless you all. Amen. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> Hallelujah. I think mom and dad think a lot of her. Hallelujah. Isn't that beautiful? Amen. She's got two beautiful sisters. Hallelujah. She's got a brother hiding here somewhere, but we might be best. To, oh, he's right there. Might be best not to turn him loose. Amen. Oh, let's just give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. 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 In an orderly fashion, saints, come. Greet our sister Vika. Amen. Welcome her. Let her know you love her. You're praying for her. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Brother Jay, you got something we can sing softly?
they're dismissed. Let's sing 492. Shall I reach that happy place? 